Ladies and gentlemen, I'm coming to you today from our studio here at Southern Lights as we get ready to launch a brand new artist series called All About the Artist. This is an incredible opportunity for us to sit down with incredible artists from all over the Southeast and get to know them just a little bit better. So tonight is the first episode of All About the Artist. We're going to start it off with somebody that you may have seen before uh, in the panhandle of Florida. He comes from Wee Wall Hitchcock, Florida. His name is Bryce Chancey. Bryce, thanks for being with me today. How about it, man? Hey, excited, man. You ready? I'm ready as I'll ever be. Well, tell us a little bit about Bryce Chancey. Who are you, man? Uh, my name is Bryce Chancey. I'm from Wee Wall Hitchcock, Florida. I'm 25 years old. I've got two kids, two, little, two boys here, two little girls on the way. Uh, Congratulations my, on that, by the way. Thank you, man. Yeah. Um, my fiance is Jordan. Um, pretty much, I have just, you know, grew up in Weewaw my whole life. Uh, that's pretty fiance much. Fiance Jordan. So let's don't go too far from there. How long y'all been together? Almost seven years. Seven years. Almost. What this year you, makes seven years. What took you so long to ask her to marry you? Boy, man? see, this is <laughs> these are the questions <laughs> that. <laughs> well, you know, man, it's um. You know, we had we had to grow. We had to mature for sure. You know, we had to we both had to do a little growing yeah. up. And, you know, we just didn't want to rush things. And we did face a lot of backlash. You know, oh, y'all have got kids. You know, y'all need to. Yes. But at the time, we just, you know, it just it just we wasn't ready. So how did you propose? Uh, it was Christmas morning. It was actually my it was 2019, yeah, Christmas morning of 2019, got up, kind of made her do a little uh, scavenger hunt, and then at the end of it, it was like, boom. Yeah? Yeah. And it was she pretty did. interesting. Yeah, I bet it was. <laughs> that probably won her heart right there, just as yeah. much as anything. I think she knew, she knew right away, I think. Like, he's not, nah, he don't do this, something's up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's probably saying it's about time he done this. I'll, yeah, I'll keep about, looking. Yeah, about time, yeah. <laughs> and so when did you find out about the, you got... Twins coming, right? Yes, I have. When twins did you find out about that? Uh, probably a month ago, month and a half. It oh, so was, this is real new then. It's real new. <laughs> <laughs> you excited? I'm excited, man. Yes, I am. Man, so two boys, two boys, and two girls on the way, and two girls. What do you do for a career though? What What is? Because we wall, right? That's where you're from. We wall, yes. What is there to do in we wall, man? Oh, man, if you don't hunt, you don't fish. Pretty much ride dirt roads. There's not going to be much for you to do in the we wall. Like a good life, man. It is, but you know, it's you. Sometimes you got to, you know, get out and enjoy a little more. You know, what is your idea of getting out and doing a little more? I love to write music. Um, I play softball a little bit here and there. Uh, used to run, but kind of got out of that because my running partner kind of slacked off on me, and his slacking wore off on me. But <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna blame yeah. it on him. Then we're anyway. gonna blame it on yeah. him. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but man, pretty much, you know, I just what I pretty much do for fun, you know, take the boys out, you know, hit the park. Uh, go see family and write music. That's pretty much all I do for fun. Sounds like so. You mentioned horse barn. Do you, are you into horses, or do you just like I, living in a horse barn? So I was um, my whole background, not my whole life, but a major time of my life, I was surrounded by horses. What do you do now for a career? Pest control. Really? <laughs> yeah, man. Man, you went from breeding horses to killing killing bugs killing and everything. Bugs. Yeah, I tell you what, definitely was not what I was thinking I was gonna do. How do you like the pest control world? Because I bet you get in some tight places. Fell into it, you know. At first, it was like, eh. Um, but I actually did grow very fond of it, you know. Um, I pretty much do now, like termites, you know, termite treatments, WDOs. I do get in some very tight places, you know. Was a little claustrophobic at first, but I got had to get over that. Yeah, because you had to crawl under houses where it's like really narrow and nasty spiders. <clears throat> um, yeah, whatever's under there. What's the craziest thing you ever found under a house? Man, I was crawling under that bad boy one time. I will never forget this. I was under it. It's a big old brick house, and I was at the very far corner. You know, I'm shining, I'm doing an inspection, I'm like, oh my God, dude, I seen like a snake skin shed if so long, bro. I, mm. How quick did it take you to get out from underneath the house? I probably didn't finish the rest of the inspection. <laughs> 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 no, I, I did, but it was, uh, I was very aware of my surroundings after that, for sure. That was definitely scary. For sure. 
So um, just to move beyond that, so you're you're here because you're an artist and you're talented and you write music and you perform. So tell us a little bit about that side of things. So I'm a songwriter, you know, rapper. I rap, I songwrite. I'm kind of trying to, you know, do a little singing here and there. But um, I'm a part of a duo um, set to. Oh, yeah. You said you love me, said you would never put no one above me. That was a lie. I really tried. Yeah, I seen you being my pride. I swallowed my pride, but you want the truth. Got me spilling all my feels in the booth. Don't want every girl, no matter the cost. Ooh, wait, you know I'm a boss. Yeah, never been average, so you took a loss. Yeah, ask all your friends that claim that they hate me, secretly wanting to date me. Talking behind your back when they trying to face me. Now it's time to face it. Me and you really over. Now you kind of basic. No more time I'm wasting. Got a dose of your own. Wonder how I was tasting. Got a new boo yeah, thing that I'm kind of chasing. It's me and my partner, Hunter Brett. Uh, pretty much, we just write and record, write and record, write, write and record. Yeah? Yes. So do you have, so set two, do you have a, a name that you go by outside of that? Let me tell the, the story behind this right. before well, I just us, drop the name. So <laughs> Tell us the story behind I it. I was working, I, I was probably 18, right out of school, started working um, for this company. One of the guys that was in my training class, you know, we before we knew any either one of us wrote music, we're like, hey man, you know, we kind of become friends. And he's like, I'm like, hey, you know, we can hang out in my truck at lunch. You know, we we'll eat lunch. Da da da. He's like, cool. So he gets to the truck. He, he's listening to beats, and I'm like, bro, like, you do music or something? He's like, yeah, yeah. I say, oh, cool, me too. He's like, okay, cool. Let's let's start writing. So we start writing. Well, days go on, and I'm telling my best friend at the time, you know, I'm like, dude, I met this guy. Da 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 da. He's like, oh, cool, that's awesome. You know, cool. We're coming from break one day, and his name is Cameron, Cameron Peterson. Me and Cam's walking, and he passes my best friend, and he's like, what's up, cuz? And I'm like, wait, y'all know each other? Like, yeah, we're cousins. My best friend's like, yeah, bro, this is my cousin. I told you about rap and, you know, wrote music. I'm like, oh, no, nah, bro, you didn't tell me that. But anyways, <laughs> I started rapping with him, man, and I told him, you know, I was, I was starting out. I didn't have music to present to him. All I had was, you know, what I could hit in front of him. And he was like, man, you're like – you're like Houdini. Like, I don't know what you're going to do. So the name Houdini, he was like, that's what your rap name needs to be. So I was so happy that he was like, that's what you need. I didn't have a name. You know, I'm just writing music at this time. So I was like, awesome, Houdini. And it just didn't fit. So I'm sorry thinking I'm like, you know, I'm definitely going to go through a name change. It's just, it's not, I was actually uncomfortable saying it. So I knew I had to go through a change. So, you know, I'm really trying to think hard on, you know, what is going to be set and set in stone. And I, I listen to all my music in pretty much in from the beginning of me recording to, to now. I always, you know, you know, you already know what it is. It's the boy. I've always said it's the boy. So that it was like, you know, it's the boy. Like I am the boy. Like I feel like I'm the boy, you know, that the boy, it, that's it. And that's where it's been. So it's stuck. It's stuck. Have you done a lot of recording as a solo artist as the boy? I probably got, you know, six, seven, between six to eight songs as the boy. Uh, but yeah, pretty much my solos is Houdini. We don't even want to go there. We're not. <laughs> so we, we can't go get there. any of that. Then. No sir. No, <laughs> no sir. <laughs> so where have you performed before? Um, actually, the first song that I dropped was called "Stronger Than the Storm." As a lot of people who know, you know, um, the Panhandle went through faced one of the most catastrophic storms to hit the coast. Uh, Hurricane Michael come through, wrecked the, you know, wrecked everything in its path. I wrote a song about it, and, you know, it kind of, you know, blew up a little bit, went viral on Facebook. Um, so these people held an event. His name was Matt Larson. Shout out to Matt Larson because Matt Larson is an amazing person. He does a lot for other artists. So, you know, shout out to Matt. Matt reached out to me and told me he was ho hosting this event um, called Stronger Than the Storm, and he wanted me to perform my song. So that was my first performance. So pretty much I performed it in front of probably you know man 100 somewhere in there but it was all people from my hometown you know from the surrounding county so it was very it was an emotional performance you know um I got done with it and they're like no do it again so I, I actually <laughs> done it twice and it was awesome you know it made me feel good so that was my first performance and then you know I had the honor of being a part of Southern Light that was most definitely the that's right you were the first year right first year yeah first year what do you think about that man I was so nervous at first, and really I wasn't going to do it, but I was like, you know what, I got this song I think I could submit, you know, might get me in. Um, you know, people liked it. I, I made it in. It was life-changing, man. It really was because at the time I had, you know, really didn't have a whole lot of stage pre presence nor, you know, um, nor experience. So it was in, you know, big auditorium. I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, got there, man. 
all these families, you know, there was amazing. There, the other artists there, they, it was amazing. Um, lots of families, lots of people just ready to, you know, enjoy the show. Um, my name got called and I was like, wow, it's too late to back out on this now. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely too late. So, man, I walked out, you know, the nerves kind of took over me. But once I started, you know, going over my first song, it kind of, you know, went away. So you're kind of being humble a little bit about that, because mm -hmm. if I recall correctly, you and one other contestant, Dylan Kelly, Dylan actually Kelly. had like the top he gave most, me a run for my money. <laughs> yeah, y'all had like the top most liked videos uh, leading up to the and yeah. Views. You guys um, went to the TV station and the news. Yeah. yeah, we well, made the news. It was. I was man. reminded of that recently. Uh, Dylan sent me a picture of <laughs> of the three of us down there. So I, I was just. It was of early that. morning. Yeah, uh, I know we were looking rough. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, man. Um, I did. I submitted the video. I really didn't think that. You know, it was going to do what it did, but it was a very relatable song. Um, unfor not unfortunately, but, at, you know, during some certain times of my life, I had faced depression. So I kind of, you know, used to really spill my emotions into my music. Uh, so I wrote this song, you know, about you know, going through some dark days and I posted it and it was obviously, you know, relatable. But Dylan Kelly, he gave me a run for my <laughs> money. And I actually don't even remember it was so close. I really can't even tell you, you know, who had what, but it, yeah, Southern Lights definitely opened up my eyes, you know, showed me that I was capable of doing things that I really did not think I could do, man, because I'm telling you, when I hit that stage and I seen all those people and all of their eyes was on me, <laughs> I knew I could not mess up. It was so, it was a crazy experience, man, but definitely the most life changing experience I've had as far as the artist side of me yeah. so if you're an artist and you're watching this and you'd like to be a part of southern lights please flip, do flip over to our our uh, southern lights page please do on facebook or our website check it out i mean we're always looking for um talented artists that want to be a part of an incredible experience yes because it's more than just i mean granted we give away ten thousand dollars i mean yeah. who, who don't want to get that but yeah you know the whole experience like people take away so much from that so um yeah appreciate they do. The, appreciate the plug on that they That's do thing. um just one more thing on that yeah it, it, it also allowed me to, at the time, you you know, you know, there's a lot of artists around here, but you really, in a time like that, in a situation like that, it really showed like who really wants this. And it was amazing, man. Like there was dancers, there was, I think there was a magician, there was a wide variety and it was a wide variety of people just like me chasing, yeah. you know, chasing the same dream. So it was awesome to just have the opportunity and be around all those people. So what got you started? Let's go back to the very beginning. What got you started interested in being a rapper? Like, well, Tell me the, the early years there. Uh, so I, originally I didn't start out writing music. Um, I started out writing short stories and poems. Like that's, that's one thing nobody, you know, a lot of people don't know. Um, I used to love writing short stories and poems. So when I was in, I don't remember exactly what grade, but they used to do this speech called the Tropicana Speech. So I wrote this speech about sagging pants. About what? Sagging, sagging pants. pants? Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, I felt so cool. And then I let my older brother hear it. And he's like, oh, no, that is garbage, man. Like, no, this that's a, that's a style, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, ah, hurt my feelings. So I let my teacher hear it. And she's like, no, this is something we got to get out to the school. You definitely got to. I'd done it. Um, I won my class. I moved on to the school, come in second in my school. And then we moved on to the county, and I come in second in the county. So that right there was really like, wow, like, I wrote this. These people obviously enjoyed it. So, you know, it, it really opened me up to, you know, writing more. Then eventually I broke into writing songs and I had sat on so many. So I had a lot of songs that I had wrote. They're probably not good. Um, but I had a lot of songs that I had wrote that nobody had ever heard. Why do you say they're not good? Man, I'm telling you, that was a different, that was a different time. You know, I was not mature. So, you know, I can't tell you what kind of profanity was maybe used um and i was around people who can't be no worse than wap i mean surely it wasn't it that. was not okay. as bad as that <laughs> but you know i was around a crowd because at, at that time when around starting i was around trap rap you know the studio that i went to there was no pop artist there was no r&b artist there was it's trap rap trap rap only um so i was really trying to you know 
blend in with them and I wasn't being myself. So, you know, when I do go back and I listen to some of that, it's like, wow, man, like I was trying to fit in with them so much. I was nowhere near who I am. So that was one thing, you know, that's, I just don't like to go back to that music. It's just like, wow, this is not me, not me. Who was the most influ- influential person in, in you getting started? I cannot tell you his real first name. I've only ever known him by Woodrow or Woodrow Cash. Um, I was introduced to Woodrow by Cameron Peterson. Uh, I go to his house. We're recording at his house. I'm like, oh, I'm going to the studio. I was so excited. Like, this is my first time ever recording a song. I get there, and I'm around him, his uh, wife, his old lady, uh, and he had a friend with him. And then the guy, Cameron, that I'm with. So Cameron's like, hey, this is Bryce. You know, I'm like, real shy, nervous. And he's like, this is Bryce, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, hey, how long you been doing this? This is my first time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget, man. He said, well, I'm going to tell you, if it's trash, I'm going to let you know, bro. I'm like, oh, my gosh, what? He's supposed to hurt my feelings. I hit the song, and afterwards he was like, dude, you got it, bro. Like, wow. if this is really your first time, like, kudos to you, blah, blah, blah. I can't, I, that's not the exact words that he said, but really just was like, wow, like, that's another one. Like, this dude records a lot of people in the city, and he's saying, you know, I'm good. That inspired me to push my pen even harder, and the fact that he, you know, let me, come over whenever you know whenever I needed to um whenever I hit him up it was yeah dude um it, it, we kind of kind of grew close but not so close but in here you know Woodrow is most definitely a huge inspiration what really you know kicked me into gear with music so I know a little bit about we wall I've been through it a time Uh-oh. or two and I, I'm kind of curious how did how did home folks take and respond to the boy. I was trying to find, you know, my style. I'm, you know, I'm trying to hit new flows. I'm still new to recording. So I, I'm very picky and I'm, I'm very self-conscious when it comes to, you know, the music. So at that time, I, I had never released anything until the Hurricane Michael song. And the str- it was called Stronger Than a Storm. And I dropped it and the hometown's like, oh my gosh, you know, da, da, da. It, I think it has like 270, 170, 171,000 or 200. I can't remember. But it, it kind of went crazy on Facebook, man. We did a little video to it with, of damage. But they they loved it. But what they didn't know is that's not really the music that I want to make. This was just something that I made because I was I was going through it. My whole town was going through it. I felt like it was something that, you know, I felt like that at that moment I could finally use my voice to, you know, help others, to get us through this, you know, be encouraging. So that's what I was trying to do. And, you know, I fell into that kind of inspirational, you know, not that I'm not inspirational, man, because I'm a very inspirational person, but that's just not the lane that I wanted to go in. But they liked it, you know, but they just for a while didn't know that that's not me. <laughs> so the first song that you brought up a minute ago was the the one that you, um, the one that you wrote about that you entered to enter, entered into Southern Lights. With. Yes, it was called Take My Hand. Ooh. Where did that song come from? Oh, man. I was at a very, very, very dark place in my life when I wrote that song. Um, probably actually one of one of the darkest times I've ever been through. Not the darkest, but one of the darkest times I've ever been through. That is where that song come from. And at the time, one of my mom's friends, you know, rest in peace to Miss Jacqueline, uh, unfortunately you know took her life so I I was just I was going through that and then that happened and it was like wow and I never told nobody that 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 just it was like okay let me just hit this and see how you know where it goes but that song was wrote during the one of the darkest times of my life man most definitely I I want to know a little bit more about that. Like, what what all was you going through? It was bad, you know. My my parents were splitting. Um, I thought that was you know pretty much the end of the world. Never really voiced my opinion and my feelings on that, but that 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 wrecked me. I was going through that, and then it was just a very dark time. Very. How did that impact your writing? Mm, man, I tell you, I wrote it. 
And I was like, wow, got to go record it. Went to record it. I let one person hear it. And they called me and FaceTime. And they're like, bawling. Like, bawling. And I'm like, oh, God, you know, why are you crying? And they're like, this is so great. You know, it's, I can relate to this so much. And it was like, wow. You, like, you, I'm not the only one that's gone through this, you know. So it was like, okay, I'm, I've obviously got some, you know, not issues, but I've got some issues going on. I'm going through things that other people is. That song allowed me to, it really showed me, okay, this is, this is what I need to do. You know, the first song was like, eh, I might have just, you know, hit luck with this because of the current situation. But that song, getting the, the opinions and the feedback of that, it was like, wow, like this is, you know, really what I'm supposed to do. So it made me push my pen even harder. What is the style that the boy is all about? I'm more of a, hey, get me on my feet. I, I want to. I, I want to feel good. I want to hear this song and just want to, you know, move. Want to dance. Want to cut up with my friends. I'm really into the pop. I you could say we're. I'm pretty much in the pop genre. I still rap. Um, but I really like that popish lane, that hip hopish lane. You know? So is set to more of a uh, pop, hip hop. That's a good question. Like, um, I, where, where I would it? see us as more of pop. Yeah. But then it's like, oh, I rap. So it's, it's more of pop, you could say. Pop slash hip hop. So what is the, the best song, your favorite song that you've ever done to date? Like what is your hands down, <laughs> you're going to die on this hill kind of thing? Like what you know, is what's that? what's so crazy is we just wrote this song. Just um, wrote it. Is yeah. it be, now, and, and I say this all the time. What? Go ahead. Did you? Did are you saying that because you just wrote it and you're really excited about it? No. No. Like this is no it. because it's something. It's something different than you know I've ever done. Uh, not you know ever done, but it's just a different. It's a different take for me. Um, we just wrote this song. Crazy that I have listened to this beat. Like I got in my car to go to work, and I listened to this beat. Just this beat. Thirty minutes whole way to work, get in, whole way home. I'm just constantly going over my verse, going over my verse, going over the chorus because we instantly heard the beat and it was like, wow, I, I, I listened to it first. Called Hunter. Hey, you heard the beat uh, from Jamie? No, listen to it now. <laughs> he loved it. It was like, we're, we're big into beats, you know, with voices in the background. So he loved it. I loved it. It was just one of those, that, hey, we got to knock this out. Um, what's your process for writing? Sometimes it's like, if I ain't feeling the pen, I'm not writing. Really? Yeah. And it's got to be paper. No, it don't got to be paper, but I like to write on paper. Yeah. You know, the, just the the process of writing on paper is just, ah, you know. So you two no, sit down <laughs> and paper and pen, beat starts playing, like that's that's your process? Pretty much. We yeah. kick back. We And the crazy thing is... We've never changed seats, ever. That's one thing I've always noticed from the top. The first time we started writing at his place, and that's the other thing, like, it's, it's, we kind of got to be there, you know. There, so it's got to happen at his place? It don't have to, but that's Same where we would prefer. Same sides of the table. That was where we have never, ever switched up sides of the table. Like, it, when I get there, pretty much he's sitting in on his side. We're fixing to get ready to go, you know. You mind if we show uh, a video of you guys um, writing a little bit? No, I don't because I have this video that I would really like to show the world of what it's like to be lied to <laughs> about not having nothing to a beat. And it just, boo. He, boo. Okay, so there's a story there. Come on with it. What happened? So we had this beat. We didn't really want to rush it. Um, I, could, I just couldn't come up with nothing to it. It was just one of those that just really stomped me. I don't know why, but it was so good that I knew that I can't rush it, you know, whatever. We tried to hit it multiple times, multiple times. One day we had been sitting there. I swear this is so real because I had it on video. Two hours of recording, we're like bouncing between beats because we just cannot get nothing going. Then in the video, you hear me say, go back to Medusa. Hunter's like, he starts, when the chorus starts, he starts saying lip words. And in the video, you see me like lean down to try to hear him more. And I'm like, no way, no way, like this is what? And I'm like, what bro, you really you really had this or have this, and you just now showing me? And when he, it was the moment we heard that, it was game time. We just needed the chorus, that's what we needed. The, we needed the chorus, 
when he when he hit that chorus, I'm like, oh, dude, this is it. <laughs> this is it. This could be our ticket. But we never dropped it. Oh, no. It was good, but... It was great. Yeah. Gosh, it's great. What kind of what what's your themes? Like what themes do you guys write about? Like what's your your heart about? It's not that we say, hey, let's write about this. It's just we hear a beat and for some odd reason, every time we come up with lyrics, it's it has to do with love, you know, it has to do with breakups. You know, we're both young. We've we've both been um with our spouses for for a while, both of us. So, you know, We've been through things. It, it's just it just falls into place. I really feel like that's what we was meant to write about, though. If you could write, um, like, if there's one artist you could perform with or you could write with, who's your favorite? Nikki Drake. Yeah, I'd say I'd say give me Nikki. Yeah? Give me Nikki. Yeah, I, I love female rap. Now, that's another thing. Like, I love male rap. I love. I love female rap. I love to hear a girl, a woman, get on a beat and just. Eat that beat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And Nikki does that every time, you know. <laughs> yeah, so shout out to Nikki. <laughs> Maybe I'll get my feature one day. There you go. I hope so so, so see Nikki, this. when you when you listen to this, hit, hit hit the boy up. Please give me my feature. Yeah. I'll eat that beat up all day long. <laughs> <laughs> when you're not in the studio and you're not working, killing termites and bugs and roaches and everything, what's your uh, what's your favorite thing to do? What's your hobbies? Don't really have so much of hobbies no more, but I do like to hunt. I do like to fish. Um, man, more, pretty much if I'm not writing music or I'm not in the studio, if I'm not working, I've got my kids. Dad life. Super dad, huh? Super dad. You but, so you like, mentioned Michael, though. That was your, you mean yeah. Hurricane Michael, right? Yes, my, yeah, Hurricane Michael. So how were you impacted by that? Um, Jordan was pregnant. Yeah, she was pregnant because it was in October. She was pregnant. We lived in a trailer, a little single wide trailer. Uh, definitely was no option of riding it out there. Nah, not doing that. Because really, at first, it wasn't supposed to be all that bad. And then I, what I remember, what I recall is the night before, it was going to be this. And then the, the next morning waking up, it's like, what the world? So Jordan had went out of town. I chose to stay. I was just going to go to my mom's. I got to my mom's, man, and it was so wild because it happened during the day. And I pretty much kind of grew up in the house where I wrote it out at. I watched out the front door. Everything that I had seen, everything that I had known from the time of living at this house, it was gone. It was it was gone. Like, it, it just, uh, man, it was, mm, that was rough. I, I honestly don't see how it couldn't affect anybody that it come in their path. It, it, it hurt you. you know, so that's way. where the song Stronger Than the Storm yes. was born. Yes. What's one of the biggest challenges that you've faced um, in your music career, like with production and, you know, recording and all that kind of stuff? We wrote this song, Yes, Not Maybe. Um, I don't even remember who made the beat. Contrabands, maybe. Contrabands. Contrabands is a big producer that we like. Uh, I don't remember who made the beat, but the moment we heard the beat, it was... It, we knew. Like, we knew. But we also knew that we needed more than us on it. So we wrote and we sent it to, actually I made a post on Facebook and I said, I'm in search, we're in search of a female artist, da, 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 singer. Brooke, a lot of people get tagged. Brooke Washer gets tagged. So we're like, hmm, let's check out Brooke Washer. We sent her the lyrics of Hunter singing. She sends us a video back of her singing. <laughs> Brooke sends the song. Back, it's like wow. So then, I wrote her verse. Um, you know, no shame. You know, she writes music, but I wrote her verse. That was a challenge because I was like, okay, she. I'd never really worked with her a whole lot, so I was like, hmm, okay, I, I got to figure this out. So I was kind of scared. That was probably my biggest challenge though. Uh, writing that, hoping that she would like it, hoping that it would fit, and man. It just she she got it and just it was like hey now oh but please wait yeah. nobody take this as I just write, write Brooks music you know Brooke is she in the is song a song you wrote the, you yes. wrote the one. I just sure. wrote the verse sure. you know I'm not trying to just take credit for that but that was just a challenge in part because that's the first time I wrote for a female and after you guys got it up and going it went viral and everybody loved it and oh dude I, I ain't gonna say so much of it went like really viral but 
Boy, howdy. It didn't go full on COVID. It just went kind of... Yeah, we got some attention. Oh, yeah? Yes, sir. It was like, man, because a lot of people know Brooke. You know, Brooke, she gigs. Shout out to Brooke, because that's what she does for a living. That's how she pays her bills, you know. Um, She gigs 24-7, man. So a lot of people know her. So it was like, wow, we had her people, and then we had, you know, her followers. We had, you know, my followers. We had Hunter's followers. We were associated with other people at the time. We had their followers. It was just like, yeah, everybody just loved it. And I was like, okay, we got great feedback from that. At the time, that was my favorite song. It was like, wow, this is it's next level. You know, it's, to me, it's like, wow, not just because it was us, by no means, but the moment that I heard that song, you know, after we were getting ready to leave that night, we're listening to the song for the last time. There's just like, wow, this is crazy that we wrote this, you know, that we sang this, that we rap. Unbelievable. Crazy. What do you what are your expectations for yourself as an artist? Man, I first and foremost, I really want to make it. <laughs> I really, really want to make it. And I see myself as making it. I know a lot of people think it's so far fetched, but I really want to make it, but more importantly, I want to like be uh, okay for other artists who hasn't, you know, started recording or just getting started recording or songwriting. You got to start somewhere. We all got to start somewhere. And unfortunately, most of us got to start down at the bottom, you know, but keep pushing. I really want to inspire others to, you know, it, it, every day you've got to add another step to your ladder. And it may, may, it may not even be every day for everybody, but I just want other artists, you know, like myself to know that, hey, keep doing it. It's people like us who make people like them that's up at the top. You know, they're, they're just like us. This is how they started. We're not going to make it if we quit. Don't quit. So I just really want to be, a, you know, an inspiration to other artists to just keep pushing with music, man, or anything that you do. One last question for you, maybe okay. not, but we're getting to the end of this thing. If you could speak to your kids right now, oh, and they see it in 25 years, what would you want to tell your kids? First and foremost, change my life. Um, didn't have the, not going to say I didn't have the, you know, the best of father situation because I had somebody step in, and, but changed my life you know, drastically from the moment I found out I was going to be a dad, you know, it was kind of like, eh, everybody's like, oh, it's going to change your life. I'm like, I don't really feel a change. But moment I laid eyes, moment I got to touch, like, wow, like, I'm a dad. So to them, like, they've helped me drastically. They have shaped me into who I am. If it was not for Hudson and Peyton, I don't know where I would be. I don't, I really don't. Like, so... If 25 years from now, if they do listen to this, I do want them to know that they are the reason that I continue to do what I do. They are the reason that I get up every day and I go to work. They are the reason that I constantly fight through. You know, I, I fight, I'm, I'm battling demons just like, you know, everybody else. I battle my own demons. So they are who gets me through that. You know, they, they're my everything, man. Like, mm-mm, mm-mm. Every decision that I make, has they have to you know come to play somewhere in there because I can't make a decision to steer me away from them so I do want them to know that you know everything that I do is for them um and I hope that I'm setting an example for them and I hope that I'm showing them hey chase your dreams you know that's incredible yeah what's next for you driving an album we're trying we're mm, we're we're so we get like oh yeah we're done then we hear another beat so what's next man honestly is Knocking out these next couple songs, um, getting an album out, and just showing people what you know what set two is really about. We don't have a whole lot of music out. We got three songs out, but the three songs that we have out, oh, you've heard nothing yet. It's we got some good ones. Well, good deal. Well, I do think that there's something really cool that's fixing to come out as well um, here in the near future for you. Yes, sir. In fact, it's an incredible opportunity that I have to introduce. Um, the boy. Yes, sir. As uh, going forward, you guys are not going to have to hear me anymore uh, as we have a new host of All About the Artist, and it's going to be the boy. How, how? What do you think about that? Stoked. So, how, I mean, like, 
I've always kind of wanted to like do something, you know, for artists. But I'm thinking how, you know, what can I do, you know? And then great minds think alike. It just was an idea. I really feel like that was two people were thinking about it. We put it together. Boom. This is an opportunity. I want this to be an opportunity for people like myself, people who don't have a whole lot of exposure, don't get a whole lot of exposure. Come out here. This is all about you. This is why it is called All About the Artist. I'm, I'm, I want to know if you sing in the shower, what's your favorite song to sing in the shower? Like, this is a place for you to get out here and talk about that. This is a place for you to get out here, sit here in this seat, and whatever your real name is, we don't, we're not worried about them. We want to know about you. So this is a place for you to come and feel like, hey, these people are, they, they look at me as an artist. This is a place where you are an artist. We respect you as an artist. It takes courage to, to be an artist. I really do believe that. Um, so I, I want to get as many people exposed as possible because there is so much talent around here that, you know, not everybody's going to see because Brooke Washer's talented, but I never knew Brooke. So it's like, wow, like if there's Brooke, if there's, you know, set two, there's, you know, whoever else. Wow. There's a lot, there's a lot more around here that I want people to know, you know, I want to know more about, and I just, I really, really respect the teaming up here with who we have and and it's just going to be awesome man it's going to be a great opportunity for artists i believe so guys this is going to be a great opportunity for you if you are an artist in the south alabama south georgia or the northwest florida area yes, um, we're looking forward to you coming and joining us right here in the studio as right we here. get to know a little bit more about the artist uh who you are and and a little bit more about what you do and who you are i mean it's, it's not just about the art but you know as a as an artist who who you are personally as well and yes. Um, so we're looking forward to filling this stage uh, or this studio here with uh, additional talented people from all over the Southeast. Uh, so you'll need to keep checking back. This will be on yes. podcast audio format. So you guys check it out um, and come back and let's see who's going to be with us. Today. Bryce, I appreciate you joining me today, man. This has been great. Hey, I appreciate you. This is the start of something awesome. Something man. incredible. Something and I'm awesome. glad to be a part of it. So you guys keep in touch. Follow us on Facebook, southernlights.cc. Yes, you can also check us out at allabouttheartist.com. Yes, allabouttheartist.com. I pulled that up today, and it was like, what? <laughs> dot com? That's it. We got some dot com. Allabouttheartist.cc. You no, know, what I am trying to do is promote the dot .cc. .cc. That way it, and, but I didn't, so. But anyway. Okay. All right. Thank you guys for being with us. Yes, appreciate y'all. Thank you for having me.